Welcome. We have several new problems that we're going to try to solve today uh, using some of the components we've learned and we're really going to try to work on our problem solving skills. So the first query says list the ticker symbol and the percentage of each ticker symbol's total number of trading days to the total number of days for all stocks. Well this one is tricky. Um, and I'll show you why in a moment, but we are looking for a ratio. So we're looking for two or three things that um, are tricky and are somewhat difficult sometimes to figure out. This is the answer. Um, a lot of times people are going to struggle with parts of this, so let me explain piece by piece. First of all, we select the ticker symbol. Then we have this piece. Now this piece is going to look for the number of days traded for that ticker symbol. Somebody might say, yeah, it looks a lot more complex than that because I have that cast to a decimal. I'm doing that because if I just do a count star, it returns an integer. In this case, I'm going to be dividing the number of days for a ticker symbol by the number of days for all stocks. And that's going to return two integers. And in SQL Server, if you divide one integer by another, you can't get a decimal. So you, you're doing integer division. So there, there are a couple of known solutions. In this case, I'm casting my integer to a decimal. Then in this portion, I'm querying to get the number of total rows, and that's going to also give me an integer. I cast that also to a decimal. Now, another tricky thing here is I am doing a subquery in the outer select. So some people will have seen a subquery after the from, um, in, like in the where clause. A handful of people might have seen a subquery in the from. Sometimes we call that a derived table. Uh, but not a lot of, especially beginning people, will have seen a subquery in the outer select. So this, this portion that I have highlighted is calculating the total number of rows. And it's, it, that's the denominator. And the numerator is the total number of rows for each ticker symbol. Because I want to say for each ticker symbol, then I have to do a group by ticker symbol. Now, uh, at the end, the alias here is percent of total. And then I'm going to order by percent of total descending. So it's going to show me the, the ticker symbols that have the highest percentage of rows. So let's run that. You'll see pretty low numbers uh, because... Um, we have a hundred stocks and so you'd see somewhere a little more than one percent to a little less than one percent by the end depending on how, how long that stock has been trading. So the big takeaway on this one is doing a subquery in the outer select and the other big thing is that we to do integer to do integer division, we have to do a cast um, to a decimal, or that's one of the solutions. Let's do the next one here. This question reads, list the trade dates in descending order and the opening price in ascending order. Th those are going to be order by portions of all the stocks that open with a price greater than the average open price. Well, this question's kind of fun in that the actual meat and potatoes of the question is the second half of the question. So we have to find stocks that open with a price greater than the average opening price. Then the first part of the question is how we want to order the answer. Let's go to our answer. This is kind of fun because it illustrates a couple of things. One, uh, it's a type of question you can only solve with a subquery. Uh, 
The other thing is we have people sometimes that want to put an aggregate in the WHERE clause. You cannot put an aggregate in the WHERE clause at all. To get around that, we build a subquery and then we compare that to something in the WHERE clause. So let's get our query here. And this is our answer. Um, we're going to show the trade date, the opening price from stock data where st underscore open is greater than, and see a lot of people would want to say where st underscore open greater than average st underscore open. You can't do that and it wouldn't make any sense. The inner query then says select the average opening from stock data. So that's going to give the average opening price for the entire 410,000 rows then it feeds its answer to the outer query. The, the question asked us to, to order our answer by trade date descending and then by opening price um, and the defaults ascending there. So we execute this query. Let's go look at the top here. And uh, we see those dates and prices where uh, opening prices uh, were greater than the average. So we love this question because it's the kind of thing that can only be done in a subquery. Okay, let's move to the next one here. So this question reads, list the minimum closing price of Ford stock in September 2001 after September 11th. So it's not, a, it's not a particularly hard query if you start to visualize that you have a couple of things you need to put in the WHERE clause. So let's just look at our answer. And we're going to look at a oh, ticker symbol and then we're looking for uh, a closing price. Um, and I'm just going to change this one to reflect a little bit better the question. So we'll just do a ST close here. I think that this reflects a little more what the question asked. So the ticker symbol, the closing price from stock data, where trade date is greater than 9-11, and the ticker symbol equals Ford. Actually, in this case, let's just take out the group by because we don't even need that now. And that's my favorite answer right here. So we'll run that and we'll see um, the, the prices for uh, after 9-11. If you wanted to see the trade date here, you could add the trade date to the question. And you could see anything after 9-11. And maybe if I ordered by trade date, let's just add that. And we could add that to our query. Sometimes it's fun to just do variations of queries. So it does, in fact, say that the first day that we had data that there was trading was the 17th of September 2001. And we could start to look at stock prices following those events on 9-11 and 2001. Okay, so on that one, we, we did more problem solving. Uh, we looked at a subquery where that's the only way that we could solve it. Uh, we start to answer our own questions of what might or might not have happened after significant events. Thank you.